So welcome to Unit 14, Social Psychology, and this is Module 78, Aggression, and these slides align with Meyer Psychology for the AP Course 3rd Edition textbook. So the learning targets are to be able to explain how psychology's definition of aggression differs from everyday usage and identify the biological factors that make us more prone to hurt one another and to outline the psychological and sociocultural triggers of aggression. So in psychology, aggression is any form, any physical or verbal behavior intended to harm someone, whether done out of hostility or as a calculated means to an end. The assertive, persistent salesperson is not aggressive, nor is the de dentist who wants to make you wince with pain, but the high school gossip who passes along a vicious rumor about you, the bully who torments you in person or online, and the attacker who mugs you for your money are aggressive. So what are some of the biological factors that lead to aggression? Genetic influences, neural influences, and biochemical influences. So twin studies show us about genetic influence on aggression that if one twin, one identical twin admits to having a violent temper, the other twin will often independently admit the same. Paternal twins are much less likely to respond similarly, showing that there is a genetic influence, a pretty strong genetic influence in there. Two genetic markers in those who commit violent acts are the Y chromosome and the monamine oxidase A gene, MAOA gene, which helps break down neurotransmitters such as dopamine and serotonin. So what about brain structures? Which brain structures are involved in aggression? There's no one spot in the brain that controls aggression. It is a complex behavior and occurs in particular contexts. Animals and human brains do have neural systems that, given provocation, will either inhibit or facilitate aggression. Two of the structures on which research has been conducted are the amygdala and the frontal lobes. So how about the role of hormone, the hormone testosterone? We hear all about testosterone and aggression in the popular culture. Well, facial width is testosterone linked. A high facial width to height ratio is a predictor of men's aggressiveness and prejudicial attitudes. Other high testosterone linked traits among males include irritability, assertiveness, impulsiveness, hard drug use, and low tolerance for frustration. So, what about females with high testosterone levels? Well, the hyena's unusual embryology pumps testosterone into female fetuses. The result is a sort of revved up young female who seems born to fight. An AP exam tip is that notice that you're back to a nature and nurture analysis again. We're talking about aggression. The nature and nurture theme kind of weaves through everything, but especially in this section, you'll notice it a lot. The biology section is of course the nature component component. When you get to the psychological and sociocultural socio factors coming up, that's the nurture component. So what about alcohol? Does alcohol play a role in aggression? Alcohol unleashes aggressive responses to frustration. Across police data, prison surveys, and experiments, aggression-prone adults are more likely to drink and to become violent when intoxicated. Alcohol is a disinhibitor. It slows brain activity that controls judgment and inhibitions. Under its influence, people may interpret ambiguous acts as provocations and react accordingly. So what about psychological and sociocultural factors that may trigger aggression? So things like aversive events, reinforcement, modeling, and self-control, and media models could be psychological and sociocultural factors that trigger aggression. So what is the frustration aggression principle? It's the principle that frustration, the blocking of an attempt to achieve some goal creates anger, which can generate aggression. Aversive stimuli, hot temperatures, physical pain, personal insults, foul odors, cigarette smoke, crowding, all those things can evoke hostility. A prime example of this phenomenon is the frustration aggression principle. Frustration creates anger, which can spark aggression. Even hunger can feed anger, making people, which is a term that's kind of become popular, the term hangry. So how about temperature and retaliation? Researchers looked for occurrences of batters who were hit by pitchers during 4,566,468 pitcher batter matchups ups across the MLB um, game since 1952. So what were the results? The probability of a batter being hit by a pitcher increased if one or more of the pitcher's teammates had been hit, and it also increased with increasing temperature. So reinforcement 
um, can contribute to aggression. In situations where experience has taught us that aggression pays, we're likely to act aggressively again. Children whose aggression has successfully intimidated other children may become bullies. Animals that have successfully fought to get food or mates become increasingly ferocious. If positive reinforcement follows an act of aggression, operant conditioning theory, think back to B.F. Skinner, tells us that aggressive behavior is likely to repeat. How about modeling? Well, parents who act aggressively toward their children, screaming, yelling, or hitting them may serve as models for their children and how to relate to others. Parent training programs often advise parents to avoid modeling violence by screaming and hitting. To foster a kinder, gentler world, we best model and reward sensitivity and cooperation from an early age, perhaps by training parents to discipline without using violence. What about the media? Parents are hardly the only aggression models. In the US and elsewhere, TV, films, video games, and the internet offer supersized portions of violence. An adolescent boy faced with a real life challenge may sort of quote unquote act like a man, at least like an action film man by intimidating or eliminating the threat. So what's the term social script mean? It's a culturally modeled guide for how to act in various different situations. Media violence primes us to respond aggressively when provoked and teaches us social scripts, culturally provided mental files for how to act in certain situations. As more than 100 studies confirm, humans sometimes imitate what has been viewed. So this is an important question that a lot of people wonder about. Do violent video games teach social scripts for violence? Well, in 2002, three young men in Michigan spent, spent part of a night drinking beer and playing Grand Theft Auto 2, 3. Using simulated cars, they ran down pedestrians, then beat them with fists, leaving a bloody body behind. These same young men then went out for a real drive, spotting a 38-year-old man on a bike. They ran him down with their car, got out, stomped, and punched, stomped up and punched on him, and returned home to play the game some more. The victim, who was a father of three, died six days later. So some other research on video game violence. Video games can prime aggressive thoughts, decreasing empathy and increasing aggression. University men who spent the most hours playing violent video games have also tended to be the most physically aggressive. Studies of young adolescents reveal that those who play a lot of violent video games become more aggressive and see the world as more hostile. Compared with non-gaming kids, they get into more arguments and fights and earn poorer grades. So the biopsychosocial model has been talked about in pretty much every module that we've gone over um, within this, these, these um, recordings. So thinking about aggressive behavior, what are the biological, psychological, and sociocultural influences? In terms of biological, we're thinking genetic influences, biochemical influences such as testosterone and alcohol and how that interacts with our own body system, neural influences such as severe head injury, the psychological influences would be dominating behavior, which boosts testosterone levels in the, bed, in the blood, believing that alcohol has been ingested when it has or not, frustration, aggressive role models, rewards for aggressive behavior, and low self-control. Some sociocultural influences would be uh, the concept of de-individuation or a loss of self-awareness and self-restraint. Challenging environmental factors such as crowding, heat, and direct provocations, parental models of aggression, minimal father involvement, rejection from a group, and exposure to violent media. So how can we change aggressive behavior? Because many factors contribute to aggressive behavior, there are many ways to change such behavior, including learning anger management, and communication skills, and avoiding or minimizing violent media and video games. In psychology's more specific meaning, so we're great to our review now, aggression is an act intended to harm someone, whether physically or emotionally. Sometimes we forget about emotional aggression. Biology influences our threshold for aggressive behaviors at three levels, the genetic level, the neural level, and the biochemical level. Aggression is a complex behavior resulting from the interaction of biology and experience. Frustration, previous previous reinforcement for aggressive behavior, observing an aggressive role model, and poor self-control can all contribute to aggression. Media portrayals of violence provide social scripts that children learn to follow. 
viewing sexual violence contributes to greater aggression towards women and playing violent video games increases aggressive thoughts, emotions, and behaviors according to some research. That is the end of this module. Thank you for listening. Take care.